Jimmy Allen's Business Big Wigs. With the powerful photon-accelerated multi-quixy filing communicator device, Jimmy continues her interviews through time and space with pioneers in business and marketing. Today's guest, Rinsis Likert, who describes four systems of management and how organizations are rated numerically on a four-point scale. And now, Jimmy's interview. What are you reporting from your studies? All we've done is we're reporting back to American industry and government the kind of management that is yielding the best results today. What is the relationship between a company and its capability of a high rate of earning? The thing I think that is, we're dealing with here is the whole human organization. Tell us about your systems of management. You know, I can illustrate it here by different systems of management. I want to talk about four different kinds of management. System one, subordinates don't feel at all free to discuss things about the job of their sphere. System two, is, and this gradually changes in just a sharp break. Mm-hmm. But gradually across here, subordinates don't feel very free to discuss things about their job. And that's more or less typical. I they say. do it guardedly. They're, they're cautious. They play it safe. Yeah. Then over here, as you move towards system three, subordinates feel rather free to discuss things about the job of their boss. But it may still be a little cautious, a little guarded. Mm-hmm. System four is where you really have the people working for you. Uh, extensive friendly interaction with high degree of confidence and trust. Subordinates feel completely free to discuss things with the, about the job with their superior and do so candidly, honestly, lay the cards on the table. There is a relationship among people in this organization uh, where they can successfully negotiate or work out, engage in productive problem solving rather than win-lose conflict. It's a more flexible, innovative kind of organization. How can an organization move towards system four or in a more productive direction? Let me just show you a situation. There was a uh, company that manufactures pajamas. This is the Weldon plant at Williamstown, Pennsylvania. So the thing that happened at Weldon is very interesting. Weldon was purchased by Harwood. But when they got in there, they found that one of the reasons that Weldon had been losing money, and they were losing at the rate of about 15% of their capital a year, was that they were pretty well over in the plant, the manufacturing plant, uh, toward system one. And I can show you that right here. This is the way the Weldon plant was managed prior to the time Harwood bought it. How did you arrive at these measurements? Oh, we asked questions. We asked the manager and supervisory people to describe the kind of management system that was being used in Weldon prior to the time that Howard bought it. People agreed it was pretty much over toward the... Uh, toward system one. System one. Right along between one and one and a half to two. Then we asked the managers and supervisors to fill it out again in nine, or two years later. And what you can see is that in just about two years' time, just over two years' time, they had moved from here to here. Productivity has gone up as, in terms of one index of it. This is what happened to productivity starting in this period here. It went on for a while, didn't it? Yeah. And then it started up. It, this, this is typical. When you start this kind of improvement in building an organization, your current earnings may drop, but you're building a more productive organization, so your true earnings are actually going up over here, even though it doesn't show. How will management know that moving towards System 4 is working? What they ought to do is measure these kind of variables and other variables that we measured in the Weldon plan. We could show that six months by six months, year by year, this kind of change was occurring. That the management didn't have to sit back and wait. This is what's happened in this one plant that hired that employees about 800 people. Should intangibles such as attitudes, communication, cooperation be treated as assets on an income statement? Well, this, I ask this of many companies, and the typical response we get is, it, oh, Lord, we never make it in today's competitive market. What is happening there is that the treasurer is only looking at a part of the assets of that corporation. If you detect that the attitudes of employees are going down, that an organization is moving towards System 1, Will it precede a drop in earnings? If they've moved in this direction, rather than moving in this direction, 
at a sub, they would have had a probably a rapid increase in cash and not earnings. Remember, this is liquidation of human assets. Yeah. They've had an increase in cash, just like they sold inventory for 50 cents on a dollar. Mm -hmm. They're selling their most valuable assets, the asset that is high, hardest to replace. They can buy inventory, they can build plants, but you just can't just go out and hire people. Mm -hmm. What actually happens is the more valuable the person, the more productive the person, mm -hmm. the more evil he is. The more likely he is to pop out because he's the fellow that has attractive offers elsewhere. How can we assess if a company or a manager is at system four? You can test how well an organization is doing it by asking how well a particular manager is doing it by asking questions like this. How much confidence and trust do you feel your superior has in you? Does he share confidential information with you or does he keep it close? To what extent does your superior convey to you a feeling of confidence that you can do your job? Does he expect the impossible and really believe that you can do it? To what extent is he interested in helping you to achieve and maintain a good income? What extent is your superior try to understand your problems and do something about them? Then you couple one other thing that's important, and that is high performance goals. If, if, a, if you apply your new form of organization, apply this principle of supportive behavior, mm -hmm relationship and the manager and all levels in the organization have high performance goals then with adequate technical competence I'm assuming that they have that uh, then you'll have a high performing organization in other words, it's only companies that are financially successful and growing where you can have job security opportunities good pay and a chance for better pay opportunities for promotion and better jobs so that you have to have a highly successful company financially if you're going to meet what people want. What do you mean by principle of supportive relationships? What it means in essence is this, that it's important for a manager and for a company to deal with each of the people within the organization in such a way it develops within them a certain sense of importance, a certain sense that the company is interested in me, reason me. Human dignity, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. but always in terms of the individual's own expectations, his own skills, his own background. All human literature is full of the importance of each person's basic desire for a sense of, of dignity, of importance, of, of, of ego recognition, whatever you want to call it. How much research have you conducted in order to describe the four systems of management? We've done probably in a neighborhood of 300, 400 studies. Right now we're working in about 10 different organizations. They vary in, in every conceivable industry you can think of. We have done studies. We've done studies on, on the complete range or virtually the complete range of human behavior. From, as a country industrializes and wants high productivity for unit of investment, they're going to have to move in this direction. They don't, if they don't care about productivity, then they can use system one. But if they want high productivity per unit of investment, then they're going to have to move towards system four. You cannot manage a highly complex, highly interdependent kind of, uh, of technology called for by what our present engineering research and development produces and manage it under a highly centralized operation. You've got to push the decision levels down and draw people in it. Wherever you're trying to organize human effort to accomplish a goal, it doesn't matter what it is, then these kinds of basic principles of organization are applicable.